Hey everybody, today I just wanted to go over some color grading that I did for a project about a year ago. It was kind of a mini documentary slash album featurette, I guess. My sister-in-law, Caitlin, is a very talented musician, um, and she wrote a really amazing album with a lot of meaning behind it. So I wanted to shoot a documentary to kind of capture that. But I kind of just wanted to go over some of the color grading that I did on this project, and, and really it's not all that complicated. So let's just jump into it and I'll show you guys what I did. Okay, so the first clip that we're gonna look at is the interview shot. But this is kind of like the groundwork for the entire film, really. So let's just break down what I did color-wise. And what, like I said earlier, it's really not all that complicated. So like I said, this is kind of the groundwork for the entire film. We're constantly cutting back to this shot of Caitlin in her home. Um, and so I really wanted to make sure that this looked as good as possible. And so if you'll see up here in the top right, under the effects, we have everything that I used and it's just one, two, three, four uh, little tools that uh, helped bring this whole thing together. But let me just show you, let me turn these off. What, just, this is just the raw clip um, without any color grading at all. And as you can see, it is very, very bland. <laughs> uh, that's because it is shot in a log profile uh, and so we have to convert that before we can actually use it. So in order to convert your footage from log into something a little bit nicer, you need to use a LUT, which stands for lookup table. Um, and depending on which camera brand you use, there should be a different LUT to convert it to Rec. 709. So uh, I shot this on Sony, and so I used the S Gamut uh, S Log 3 to 709 LUT, which is on the Sony website. So if you use a Canon or Blackmagic, whatever, there should be some sort of conversion let uh, if your camera shoots a log. So if we click this on, already looking a lot better. I'm just gonna toggle it off and on. So it's looking a lot better. Um, and sometimes this is enough just to get it looking good. I've had a couple shots before where uh, I just throw the LUT on and it looks good enough for whatever project I'm doing. Uh, but this one, because I wanted to make sure that this shot looked as good as possible, I really wanted to add a little bit more to it. And so the next step, which I usually do in almost every shot, is just add some contrast and saturation. So you want to be careful that you don't add too much contrast and get rid of um, details in the highlights or the shadows. So once I turn this on, if you look over at the waveform over here on the left, you'll see um, the highlights are going past 100 which means that they're too bright and they're losing detail uh, but the shadows we got kind of just right where they're just above zero um, some people would prefer to have uh, less contrast and may increase the shadows like this um, some people kind of like that that look but i like having heavy contrast so if you look at these crests that are going up above 100 here these are actually this lamp this lamp and this candle. Luckily this shot was on a tripod, the camera wasn't moving very much, so it was super simple. All I did was add some masks to this, so I'll toggle this on, and I'll turn it off, back on, off, on. So if you look at that waveform over there, you'll see those crests come up and down, up and down. Uh, so let me show you what those masks look like. I just, um, in, in Final Cut, used the shape mask on this color board but I had it only affecting this lamp and that lamp um, and so what I did was just turn the highlights way down in that mask and I didn't do it to the candle I kind of liked the look of the candle glowing like that uh, it kind of flickers throughout the film which is kind of a nice little touch the last thing that I did for this clip was I increased the saturation of her dress so I toggle that off and on, so on, off, on, off. It's not a huge difference, um, and really that's what you'll find with a lot of these is after you get your basic contrast and saturation and colors fixed how you want, it's a lot of just tweaking little things. So to do that, I use hue and saturation curves, um, selected the blue, and this blue is all, pretty much the only thing in this frame is her dress, so but I, I just decided to do a, color selection and just cranked up the saturation. So it doesn't make a huge difference, but I like the way it looked like this better. And it kind of added a nice color contrast between the really, really warm lights and candle with this blue. 
if you can get your white balance and your your lighting down really well before you shoot you don't have to do a whole lot of correction so while there are some really really complex color grades and color effects that you can use for something like this you, you really don't have to overcomplicate it and i think that's a problem a lot of people uh, look at color grading and they're like i don't think i could ever do this how on earth am i supposed to do this so at some point i kind of want to go over the difference between color correction and color grading um, and i'd love to dive into some other editing softwares like davinci resolve i've used final cut pro for a long time and the the color correction and color grading tools work they're not super complicated which is kind of nice because you can get things done really really quick but I know there's even better color grading tools out there, especially with Resolve. I've seen some pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So I think at some point I'm gonna do a video kind of exploring that and getting more complicated. But for now, I just wanna do something simple to show you guys that color grading doesn't have to be as scary as uh, it may sound. And so if you guys wanna see more color grading or just general editing tips, let me know. I'd love to answer whatever questions you have, but till then I'll see you guys in the next video.